Hey guys, Nick Nardone here with a quick comparison video. We're going to be comparing the Flipside X3 wallet to the brand new and recently released Flipside 4 wallet. I have been an owner of the X3 for probably about nine months now. Uh, love this wallet. I get so many comments and compliments and people inquiring about it. Um, I love it. Can't say enough good things about it. So as soon as I got that email from Flipside that said they were going to be releasing a new version, I was super excited. Um, and I got this in a few days ago. And uh, I thought I would just do a quick comparison as I'm transferring all my stuff from the old model to the new model. So right off the bat, um, let's look at the, the packaging first. Looks like it literally comes with uh, the same box. Printing's changed a little bit. Very similar instruction sheet inside, okay? We can put those off to the side now. And the wallets themselves, they come by default with uh, this rubber band clip on the back. You can see that they each have their new markings in there. The old wallet was called the X3, or, or I'm sorry, 3X. Um, the new wallet is just called the 4. They dropped the X designation, it looks like. Um, very similar. I was a little disappointed to hear that there wasn't any increased card capacity or any really new features per se on the new version. It pretty much does everything the old one does, just a little bit better. I would call it uh, a revision. Um, it, it's a little more refined, but there's no crazy new features in all honesty. Uh, but let's go over all those refinements, and I think they do ultimately make it a much better wallet, and I'm happy with my purchase. So. The old wallet, uh, this is gonna be a, a great example, you guys, of what this wallet looks like after it receives you know, nine months to a year of wear. Um, I did not carry it with this rubber band clip, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that. You can grab either side and that will unclick and pop off here. So this is gonna have a fair amount of wear and tear on it because this was the open side for me most of the time, okay? Now, you can see a difference in texture right away. Uh, the old wallet has much more of a, a smooth, glossy finish to it. It is slightly textured, but very, very slight. The new wallet has a really nice feeling, rougher texture, and I know flip side states that it's more scratch resistant. Um, I would imagine that's just because it's gonna be harder to see scratches in it due to the fact that it's not as high sheen, um, but you can see a difference there. I'm also gonna pop the backer off of this one. We will talk about uh, back accessories here in a few moments. I'll just put those off to the side. So you can see a difference in texture there. This wall, it is more worn in. However, it was more glossy from the start as well. So the biggest difference you can see, uh, you know, in plain sight right here is obviously the button. Flip side states that this new button design just requires you to push straight down on it to release, which is true. Where this wallet, you push down, but it, you kind of have to pull back at the same time to open. As far as spring tension goes, um, I will say that the new wallet does have a higher spring tension. I would imagine it's just because it's newer and not as broken in. But if I flip both these open at the same time, the red one fires open with a lot more, um, with a lot more spring tension for sure, which I definitely like. But I think it's just because it's brand new and this one's been flipping for a good year now with weight on it. Um, other than that, you can see the location of these, uh, these plastic bits, which is the, part of the inside framing has moved a little bit. You can see the difference in button there. This gives you a really nice purchase on the wallet. And when it's in your pocket, you can feel this a lot easier. It's really one of your few reference points on the wallet when it's in your pocket to determine which way it's orientated. This one, um, it, it's very hard to feel that it, when you, uh, Raise your finger over that. It really feels just like the other side and you have no reference in your pocket to determine what's up or down. You really have to pull it out and take a look at it. This wallet, you've got this nice notch here that your thumb can dig into. Uh, the size of the lips on the inside, you know, that that, um, that latch grabs, they're very similar. Let me see if I can compare those. Very similar size. Um, so I don't think this wallet will necessarily hold together better or anything like that. The operation is very similar. Very, very similar operation. I will say that one of my few issues with the old wallet was if you drop this thing, it explodes. I don't mean that it breaks, but this latch will always pop open for me. 
and it flings open. I sometimes lose a card or two. Um, if I have any receipts or anything in the underside, they blow up all over the floor, which was always slightly frustrating because you know you drop your wallet every once in a while. When you have a traditional leather wallet, nothing really happens. It just hits the floor with a thud. This thing is loud when it hits the ground. And when it pops open with weight in it and everything blows up on the floor, everybody around you stares at you and it's kind of awkward. I'm hoping that this button, this, this new design will hold this closed a little bit better. And based on the, the amount of pressure and what it feels like when I close it, it feels like it will hold a little bit better. Now, once again, that might be just because this is newer and it hasn't worn in as much. The other thing I want to talk about on the outside is just the profile change. Um, one of my other critiques on the uh, 3X version is it's, it's kind of boring looking. It almost looks too much like a bar of soap, really rounded. Um, there aren't any sharp angles. There's nothing modern here. Um, I like this one. It's got this, this more flattened out chamfer here or a flattened out side and it gives it almost more of like a stealth profile to it. You know, if this wallet was black or gray, um, it would probably look a lot more aggressive and just a little more designed than this guy. Um, so big fan of the, of the profile change there. Physical size wise, um, we can see this one is a little bit taller, teeny bit taller. I'm gonna bring out a set of calipers here and we can compare thicknesses and stuff like that. Um, you know, this way, uh, very similar. I think this might be a teeny bit wider as well. We'll measure that with calipers in a moment. Um, well, you know, being that we're on the outside, let's, let's pull out the calipers now. So, got a set of digital calipers. We're zeroed out. Let's measure the thickness of this guy real quick. So, 18.05, let's cover this one. So, I'd say right around 18. This guy is a millimeter thicker. Yeah, about a millimeter thicker. Now, you can't feel that in your pocket. I'd be crazy to say you can. Uh, but when you're looking at the two, you can tell it's a little bit thicker. You can definitely tell. Um, I don't know why they made it thicker. Like I said, there's no increase in card capacity in this wallet. It does the exact same thing. So, I'm not gonna say it's a downside or anything, but um, it's interesting how it increased a millimeter. Uh, let's look at width real quick. Old version. I'm maxing out my calipers here. Yeah, we'll call it 72. Width on this guy. Okay, same width. Same width, it must be an illusion that makes it look wider. Cool, so just a little bit thicker. Height-wise, um, my calipers don't even go that big. Sorry, guys. All right, let's get inside, shall we? So, differences that uh, I immediately see. Just the overall design. Um, I know one of the other things that Flipside notated has been improved in the newer version is that uh, the retention of the cards inside here, they're these little rubber bumpers that grab the side of the card as it slides in and out, or silicone or rubber or something like that. Um, it says that the tension has been increased and I think they added additional uh, uh, bumpers in there. Um, and I have noticed that right, right away. As soon as you slide a card in there, it grabs it a lot tighter. I think that's an improvement for sure. Uh, the previous issue I was describing when this one drops on the ground and explodes, sometimes cards fly out of it. I don't mind a little bit of increased tension when you're sliding the cards in to prevent them from exploding if I was to drop the wallet. Um, you can see this whole surface here has been increased in width. Um, it just looks a little more substantial. I love the finish on it. Uh, this is a continuation of this rough texture that's on the outside and it looks awesome. To me, it looks like a, a matte powder coated steel finish almost. Um, and when I first opened it up, I thought this was stamped and folded steel, uh, but it is plastic. Um, but I love the texture on these two surfaces. Whereas this guy uh, is just kind of cheaper looking, a little flimsier. You've got these smaller lips here that hold the card, um, etc. Both wallets do have the RFID blocking plates. Uh, they look very similar. Looks like an anodized finish. You can see in my old wallet um, that I actually have a dent here. And that's something I noticed when I was unloading it. Um, that shows you that if you do sit on this wallet hard enough with maybe a key or something in there, maybe that scratch is directly related to that incidence. 
Um, it will push through the plastic and it will in fact dent those RFID plates a little bit. I was kind of, kind of uh, surprised when I saw that. Not that that's an issue, but something to notate. Uh, the next thing I wanna bring up is the tabs that you grab when you flip this wallet over. That's where it gets its name from, the flip side. It has this center division that you can flip over and access your cash and other things on the back side. Um, there has been an increase in clearance here, which I really like. You can see here, you've got some more negative space to grab your finger under there and grab those tabs. This guy, that space is very small and sometimes it's hard as hell to get in there. Um, you can see it is raised a little bit, which aids in getting your finger in there. However, it can be tricky to, to reach that. So I love that the flip side four has a little bit more finger room to really grab that thing. I don't see anything else to really notate on this side. The hinge assembly is very similar. Let's flip it over. And there's a few things on the back side, or the underside rather, that I really like about the new version. Uh, I would say one of the biggest improvements is these guides right here, these guide rails. This is awesome. On the previous version, there were no guide rails. And let me, let me bring in a card here. If you were to slide a card into the first version, this side holds a single card, by the way. It would swim all over the place. There's nothing to hold it. And this would become kind of annoying. Um, it's the only place that does it. This side, you've got these substantial rails that hold in the place. And this side has guides. You can see them right here and here that will hold the card. But when you flip it, this thing wiggles around. And a lot of times I'd pull my wallet out and this would be cocked to the side. And, um, you know, not, not a big deal by any means, but it seemed like a slight design flaw. As you can see here, they added these guide rails. So now your card locks into those rails and when you slide it in, it ain't going anywhere. It's super solid. So I think that's awesome. And uh, we don't need rails on this side and we've retained rails on this side, which is really cool. So all your cards are gonna stay really lined up and nice. Love that improvement. Another improvement is the cash clip. Um, my 3X, this little cash clip is designed for a US bill to fold over halfway at the 50% mark. This has always been kind of floppy for me. I'm sure it's worn out a little bit over time, but um, it makes it difficult to get a bill under there. Let me grab a bill here. Because it's not elevated off the ground, off the bottom of the wall at all. So sometimes it can be tricky to get a bill halfway under there. This is what it's designed to do, is to hold a bill halfway so you can flip through them. Now a single bill isn't much of an issue. However, if you grab a few bills, let's say you, get ch you give somebody a 20 and you have a few bills as change, and you try to get all these under there, it can be really tricky because there's no gap there and you, it's really annoying. You have to take a minute in line while people are waiting behind you. You have to try to get your finger under here, lift it up, find the center point of your stack and slide it in there. The new one, this has, is much more uh, sturdy. It's held into the side a lot better and you can see we do have a little air gap there now, which is great. I also like the change in profile and general shape of that tab. It's a little more squared off now. Let me pull this out of here for you. You can see the change in shape between the two. So this makes it a little bit easier to take your stack, slide it on there, and boom, found the center point and you're good to go. Love that, that is, that is a great improvement. Um, anything else to notate inside here? We've got our patents pending. Now it says patented, past tense. So it looks like they got their patent, which is pretty cool. Um, no other major, major changes in molding. This is kind of an ugly mold mark. I'm not sure what the purpose of that is. Looks like they eliminated that. Um, and that's really all to notate there, guys. You've got these similar uh, uh, gussets underneath the tabs here. Give them some added strength. It's like the old version has uh, a single gusset or brace. This one has two. Once again, you got some ugly mold marks here from injection molding. Uh, completely eliminated that on this. I will say that even though this texture is rough when compared to this glossy, I feel like the card slides on this better. It's just a more slick surface, probably because the rough texture creates less contact area with the plastic of the card. So another great improvement. The texture is just great. This is another excellent detail. They continued that same texture over to this clip. That is freaking awesome. Love it, just really great detail. This wall just looks cheaper. When you open this and you have all this glossiness back here and all these mold marks, you know, it makes it look more like you got it from a gas station at the cash register or something like that. This looks like a much more refined, high-end designed component, um, you know, speaking as, as a designer myself. So uh, let's talk about card capacity real quick. Each wallet holds the same amount of cards, 
three on this side, three on this side. You flip it over, one additional card, or perhaps two or three business cards. Uh, I think Flipside advertises up to 10 US bills, and uh, you can also stash receipts in here. So let's go ahead and load, load these out. They both hold the same capacity, oops. They both hold the same capacity, so I'm just going to uh, load one of them out, okay? So I got three cards here. Let me slip in here. Okay. I'll load them in one at a time here so you guys can see a little better. One, two, three. The feeling and the, the uh, you know, the engagement of the card in there, the, the sensation is awesome. It feels really great. You get a lot of satisfaction from sliding your card in and out. As silly as this sounds, uh, you can't really describe it until you feel it, guys. The silicone material that's used in those bumpers on the side, they glide really smooth on the sides of the card, and man, it just feels awesome. It's much more satisfying to slide your card in and out as opposed to a leather wallet. Um, it's just incredible, I really dig it. So three on each of those, and then we'll take the trusty Cheesecake Factory card here, slide it in this side, okay? So now I've got three, three, one, that's seven card capacity total. I usually keep an ID or a firearm license on this side. I keep uh, business credit cards on this side, personal credit cards on this side, also a driver's license usually. And uh, we can put some cash in here in the clip. Flip through this cash, grabs a center point, so it's really easy to thumb through it. Bam, bam, bam. Folds at the center point, comes back down. You can see you usually have a little teeny gap left over there. What I'll usually do, guys, is fold up some receipts and also stack them in here. You can see we still have a fair amount of room. And then when I get home at the end of the day or after a couple days, I'll remove those receipts and file them away for business purposes or whatnot. Closes up just fine. It always opens up like this. The, it's important to note that the center piece is not spring-loaded. The only piece that's spring-loaded on both of these wallets is the cover, and you have to manually flip over the center divider, and that's where it gets its flip side name from. I will also note that the weight of this, when you flip that and it slams, it's really satisfying. It's just a great feeling, and it makes the wallet a lot of fun to use. You know, a wallet is something you carry on you all day long, every day. Um, it's, it's great to make the experiences a little bit better, even with silly little, silly little things like that. Um, I'm gonna show you guys something that I haven't seen anybody do with these, um, but it works great. I am a really big fan of tile trackers. I'm losing my stuff. I don't lose my stuff, but I misplace it around the house sometimes, and it doesn't pay to go and look for it. Uh, when you can spend 15 or 20 bucks on one of these and find your wallet immediately, it makes it almost fun to lose your keys or wallet. So I'm a big proponent of tile. One of the biggest reasons why I avoided going to a more you know, unique and unconventional wallet style, such as the flip side or, or other comparables is, um, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to fit a tile tracker in it because at the time, tile only made the thicker keychain mounted versions. But when they released this, which is called the Tile Slim, I believe, it's meant for a wallet. It's slightly thicker than a credit card. I think it's a thickness of two or two and a half credit cards. And it's designed to flip into a credit card slot of a conventional wallet and allow you to, to track your wallet remotely. This has a speaker built into it and a button in the center, and it's a, it's a Bluetooth device. So it fits perfectly in the flip side, you guys. What I do is I put it right underneath the cache. It drops right in there. Wiggles around a little bit, but when you lower the cache back on it and you drop this, the cache holds it in place, and it doesn't move around. It's awesome. Now, this does absolutely lower the amount of bills I can keep in here. I can maybe keep six to eight bills now as opposed to 10 or more, but I've got my tile tracker in here, which is awesome. Now, you know, originally I was wondering, ah, oh, when it's in the, now it's gonna be in the wall, it's gonna be completely shut in here. Am I even gonna be able to hear the thing? Well, if you orientate it the way I have it here with the speaker up against the back side of the enclosure, once again, the speaker's that little hole, it's a little piezo speaker or something like that. The enclosure of the flip side actually resonates and it almost amplifies the sound. It works incredible. You can still hear the, the Bluetooth tracker going off um, and it works awesome. It really doesn't make it much quieter. I imagine if you were to slide that thing into a leather wallet and it was tight up against the side of a, a piece of leather, it would probably absorb the sound far more than this hard rigid plastic does. So this is an awesome solution and I highly recommend it for anybody with a tile. A tile. 
uh, or an anybody with a flip side that wants to get a tile, I should say. Um, this also fit in the old one, no problem. Same sort of deal, no problem. It feels a little slip more slippery in here, and I think it bounced around a little more. It seems to hold a little more firm in the new one. So this is my typical loadout, guys. I'll put a uh, the tile tracker in here. I'll have maybe five to 10 bills, um, maybe some receipts stacked on top. I will say once I start putting receipts, with bills, with the tracker, sometimes this will swell a little bit. You know, it's, I can still get it to close, but it's kind of bursting at the seams, which makes me need to empty the receipts, but it works great. Okay, um, let's talk about, let's start wrapping up here. I just want to talk about exterior um, clip-on accessories. Uh, we'll call it furniture. Um, each wallet comes with one of these rubber clips. I don't recall what Flipside calls these. I've got a name for it. Um, I'll show you the, the design here, it's slightly updated. Once again, I like the angles this more. I like how this got a little sharper, this is a little more rounded, more dog bone shaped. Um, I just love the overall styling of the new components more. One thing that's interesting is um, this, this has a similar texture to the new texture that they began using. Um, so maybe they already had that texture there, they just weren't using it for everything. Um, now one thing that's cool that Flipside did is these are, uh, are cross compatible. You can use old accessories with the new wallet and I'll, I'll show you an example of that. Clips right on there, no problem, and uh, vice versa. There we go. So it is fully cross compatible and that's probably you know a big reason why they really didn't modify the design all that much is they wanted these back plates to still be cross compatible and usable in case you invested in a few different ones. So I don't really use this rubber clip thing. Um, what I do use is this guy. This is a flip side accessory and it increases your card capacity a little bit. Um, I'm, a, I'm a business owner and like I said, I need to carry a whole set of credit cards for my business, a whole set of credit cards for my personal, multiple IDs for firearms and for driving, and seven card capacity isn't really enough for me a lot of times. However, I still wanna have the benefit of a minimalistic wallet like this. So this guy allows me to add a few more cards without adding a lot of size to the exterior of the wallet. And, uh, and I love it for that, it, it works great. So this gives you added capacity of I believe two or three cards. Let's pull three out of here and see what we can get in here. So one, two, I think I can get a third in there. Yeah, one, two, three. Not too snug at all. It's notched down in the bottom here so you can index the cards and slide them out. And then once they get to the front there, you can kind of thumb through them, pull one off the top, etc. The retention system is this clip which is injection molded to put pressure on the cards. Right now it's pushed up against a service. So as you slide a card in, it lifts that and the card slides under it. Good retention cards won't fall out um, and it looks pretty sleek. I wish they made these in some colors, could be cool, but the black looks nice, nice. it touches on the uh, the black accents that are around the wallet there as well. Um, Flipside also makes another accessory that has almost a drawer or a tray that slides out of here that allows you to keep a couple uh, door keys in it as well as change and coins. I don't really have much need to carry that stuff because I carry a keychain, um, but that could also be used. So. This does work with, with the new and the old. That's important to note, all accessories carry over. Um, being that we were talking about card retention, I just wanna show you card retention on the inside as well. Um, it's great, guys. Cards are not gonna slide out of this thing. A little bit of noise you hear there is the tile shaking around me because I don't have the wallet closed, but cards are not moving out of there. Um, and is it the same with the old one? Let's say it's very similar. Let's see here. open let's try this side you know the retention on this is good you still have that smooth feeling but it's definitely doesn't hold the cards as tight as it does with the flip side four all right so I got my six cards loaded in there I'll try to hold on to this thing yeah they're pretty good guys they are not flying out of there so see they started to slide a little bit but nothing crazy um, I will say one thing I've noticed with these wallets is if these cards ever do work their way up a little bit, it prevents the wallet from closing because it hits that latch and you run into this issue. And I've had that happen before. I've gone, I've, I've pulled my wallet out, I've played with the cards a little bit and then I go to close it 
I'm like, what's going on here? And it's because these cards, even if they just slide out a millimeter, they block that latch. Now, I haven't tested to see if the new wallet still does that. Let's take a look. Maybe the new latch design has uh, made that a little bit better. You slide all three of them out, worst case scenario. You know what, the new one does a little bit better job of pushing them back in. Yeah, I don't think it's really gonna run in that issue anymore. So that that's a little, yeah, yeah, it actually um, pushes them back in just due to you know a bunch of different things uh, combining you know, to some, it's within reason. So that's really cool. It seems like if those ever bump out a teeny bit, eighth inch, it's gonna push them back in and still close. I don't know if Flipside even designed it to do that intentionally, but that's awesome. Um, so that about wraps it up, guys. Um, that's the comparison between the two. We measured them. The weight is right on about the same. You know, let me, let me get a scale real quick for the hell of it. Let's just weigh them. Got a scale, why not? All right. Zero this bad boy out. Okay, so we have our flip side 3X, completely naked, empty. Two and three eighths ounces. Flip side four, Let's empty this guy out. Take that tile tracker out of here. Completely empty. Ah, a little bit heavier, teeny, teeny bit. Not a big deal at all, but oh, it's actually a quarter, quarter ounce heavier. Being that we're doing this review, we might as well. Yeah, quarter ounce heavier, so something to notate. Uh, maybe because of a slight increase in uh, height, probably. Probably get that from that one millimeter, and maybe they just use a little bit thicker plastic. I think this, they said that this has uh, better crush resistance and stuff like that. So, so that's it, guys. That was uh, my review and comparison of the flip side X3 or 3X versus the new released and beloved flip side 4. If you want to buy this one, I'm going to be throwing it on eBay in the next couple days. Thanks for watching.